In a talk, see, he's like that. His nose been broken a few times. The boys will get it. He's there. How are you, lads? I am here in Mullingar in County Westmead, bank smack in the middle of Ireland. I reached out to my good pal, Connor Moore, very well-known online impressionist. You know, the club... Oh, you still good on about Ronaldo. You still go and get rid of Ronaldo. He scored 18 goals last what are you season. About? Isn't that what the game's all What's about? It? And general man of many talents. I said, I'm coming to Mullingar. Will you show me around one of your local spots? And he's brought me here to the GAA club. Actually, loads of family photographs out here. Um, that's actually when we won the county final. It was me on the bench. On the bench, lad. I wasn't actually talked. I actually stopped playing that year. There's my brother Dean. Oh, there's me again. There's me and one of my best mates, Cash. I got two photographs. I wasn't even playing. I wasn't even tugged. And when would this have been? Was like, uh, this before stardom or? No, it's 2018. So the boys won the championship. I played at the start of the year and then uh, whatever happened, I got injured in a match one day and then I thought, you know, I could get injured a lot now or something or someone might punch me in the throat and I'll have a voice like Tyson Fury. Yeah. You know, you know that, you know. So how many years did you play uh, while you were kind of well known? Like, uh, for about two. And was it always just like, oh, there's your man. <laughs> no, would you believe we were playing in Longford one day and uh, I, I, I walked into the corner and this fellow never said a word. And the first ball I got, didn't I? Dummy solo. Boom. <laughs> Left him for dead, right? Man dives onto the ground. I tapped it over the bar and then sent her half back and was running over and goes, he does that to you again. Fuck him, break his face. <laughs> and I was like, oh, jeez. Like, I really don't need this. Like, yeah. your man starts walking in with his head down, walking towards me then. And I was like, oh, here we go. And your man goes, what would you like to say about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly the only bit of abuse yeah. I ever got. And it wasn't even abuse. The inner 21s. Where are you? There's me. There's the bro. It's the famous four in a row team from Shamrock's Mail. What year? Nin yeah, that's 1993, but they won the four in a row in 94. My uncle is there. He was the captain. He was the fella pretty much who I started impersonating. That's he, serious? People are like, are oh, we doing it all your life? I was like, no. But I was always taking a piss out of him down here. So, I have to give him the credit. And what age would you have been when you were taking the piss out of him? Uh, I, like when I, he started managing us like when I was about 16 or 17. And then it was just then, like I'd take the mick out when he'd leave the room or whatever. Then a family thinks. But uh, he was just, he, he's probably my best impression. If he was famous, like I'd be, <laughs> I'd be a millionaire dude. He kind of talks, he, he's like that, his nose been broken a few times. <laughs> the boys will get it. You know, right. So, right. Drink. point please, barman. Yeah, I'm giving you a Heineken. Oh, Jesus. I'm doing a lot of work on that now. So I'm sponsored by Heineken, so you're getting a Heineken. A few bob. It's been a long time since I bartended. Did I ask that the last time? Did you bartend? Yeah, in America for years. And is that, is that why you, I was going to ask you about the Westbury last, but is that why you had, is there any connection between, like your first ever going into a bar is in New uh, York? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, like I've always had a bit of an old growth for like, obviously the bars in New York, but it was more so, yeah, just for the crack. Yeah with Johnny and Carl. Oh, well, I've been there since our last video. Last yeah, video yeah, you were yeah. talking about how kind of COVID came and it kind of fucked the, fucked the start of it up and you had the two Johnnies planning coming over and then it was just about getting off the ground and I've been there since, had the crack with Johnny and the lads, serious spot. How is it all going? How is it a couple of years later? Like, do you feel like you're, because you're not over there, you can't really do a whole lot or what's the crack with it? Uh, no, I don't really feel the need to do a whole lot. Like, yeah. The boys do it. Like, yeah. so, now when people, sometimes people ring me and they're like, we're looking to book a table and I'm Slanchy. just like, <laughs> you come to the wrong person. Yeah. Uh, like Johnny and the boys, they, Johnny and Cahill do all the, the kind of heavy lifting on the ground, obviously. Not bad. And then I do a bit of marketing. Do you know what? It's lovely, isn't it? You can see by the gas in it. It just looks... Huh? Anakin, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, we had a good little chat outside about the kind of memories and stuff, but like, why have you brought me? I've said to you, it's going to be a series of bringing people to the, the local pub. This is great because we have the whole place to ourselves. Why have you brought me to this GA club? I don't want to offend anyone in the town. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is an awkward one because it's like, you might have your local, but it's like, I don't really want to be bringing yeah, some lad with a camera it, it into just, a local. I, 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 didn't, I don't have a local. Yeah, because um, you travel so much. Yeah, like, do you know, I drink in a good few places in town. Like, there's lo the thing about Mullingar is there's so many good bars. Mm. You know, and I have certain places, like if I'm drinking with my dad, I'd be in Canton Casey's. If I'm with my mates, you'd be in Daly's or maybe the Chambers. Um, Depending on who like you meet, you could be just anywhere. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be in. Would you be in Dolan's? Yeah. yeah. Mojos. Will you go there now at night? Do you know Mojos? In for an old dance. The yeah, that's the, the great back. one. Dolan's, yeah. you give that a great score on the Guinness. I did. I went in a few days after that then to try the Guinness in there. It was, yeah, it was spectacular. Yeah. And you're obviously like very heavily involved in the world of kind of sports media. 
would you say your love of sport came from kind of playing football around here or other, other things? Like? Oh yeah, when you were saying like why here, like for the reason here, so many great memories, like even in these rooms, this place has been done up since and whatever, but like uh, I would attribute my humour to being in the dressing room like downstairs. Right, yeah. With all the lads, that's where I'd say. Well, mate, so football, did you play soccer or rugby? Yeah, just I played football? a little bit of soccer, didn't play rugby. Played a little bit of hurling in school for a while, but yeah. never actually played with Plunkett's, who'd be the local team down here. Yeah. But I just played football. I just loved it down here. For me, like they're the best memories like that I have. And that's why like I kind of attribute a lot of uh, just that kind of that natural funny thing people will kind of tell me about, like to mm. the dressing room, where yeah. it's like I often like think, oh, would the lads find that funny? Right. And sometimes I put stuff in the bin. Yeah. Or I might send it to a few lads yeah. and be like, oh yeah, that, that's good. And you know by their reaction, yeah. like. And, and lads will, will tell you as well. Yeah. They won't they won't sugarcoat it. So, yeah, like, some of them that's like, shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of them like will, will. And then some of them are like, oh yeah, and you just kinda you can get the vibe off the boys. And that's how I kinda like would gauge a video. Now sometimes you be you put out a video and you're like, but well, you think it's amazing, it doesn't do as well, and then sometimes you don't think it's much good and it blows yeah. up. But your videos I find is very much like it's not like you don't post often, but you're very, you I feel like you're quite calculated about like you might post to YouTube every two weeks or something or you might leave it a month but you kinda know that when you do post. I'm I'm massive on that. Yeah. Like massive. Because uh it's rare as I well. Find, it's rare like, to see. You get some people there's a lad like that I don't want to like name names or something, but he kinda he does like accents or something like and like he does these videos I don't know, you can do like loads and loads of videos and keep flooding it with content, but like you can't keep coming up with great content if you're doing content every day. It's just not possible. Yeah. So it's just gonna be very, it's just gonna be accents and it's gonna be voices or something. Yeah, yeah. And that's where like, obviously I've, people see the videos like, but a big part of my job then is corporate gigs and different mm. things. So like, it's important for every time a video goes out that they go, oh, that was funny. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, we get that fella to do uh, our Christmas gig this year. Or yeah. we get him to do this or whatever. So like around Christmas, like I'd get a lot of work or you get a lot of work in golf clubs in America. So I, every, I just find like every video has to be like, of a certain level, Other, like otherwise then you are like, there's a law of diminishing returns, you keep posting yeah. too much. Now sometimes I don't post enough, like and I'm like, I should post a bit yeah. more. Yeah, like when I would compare you to other people, like uh, it is quite a rare thing and it's kind of, I suppose you could compare it to like uh, your favorite artist and like you might, like a musical artist and you might hear from them for, this is obviously different, but they mightn't release an album for two, three years, but you know when it, come, when it comes out, it's gonna be good. Just sitting away at a writing. <laughs> Yeah, you Alone. think you think they're just like scratching their holes? They're actually like doing stuff. Um, I usually scratch my hole. Yeah. <laughs> but you said you started out doing the impressions of the uncle. Would it have with the impressions? Would you have kind of known like, say you were in this in this pub and it was packed, and would you kind of know? Ah, oh, jeez, those some very good impressions. But you were a bit kind of shy to to do them in front of the lads for fear of being like, what the hell are you doing? Or was it always kind of part of your kind of crack? Uh, no, I think like I, I just didn't think it was that funny or that cool. Like I did it when I was yeah. real young, and yeah. then I was like. That's what I, I mean, like I can imagine yeah. doing that in front of like a load of like your 16 year old mates. And not, not even, I would say when I was 12 or 13, and yeah. then when I was in secondary school. But uh, that's what I, I mean, yeah. do it when you're young, when yeah. cool isn't really cool, and then when you're like 16, 17, hands in the pockets walking down the town, like you don't, no one wants to stand out at that age. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 no, big time. And I was like that. Yeah. And I feel I was like that all the way up until I was about 23 and I was in America. I kind of came home in 2014 from America and I was like, all right, what do I want to do? And I remember the following year, I was like, right, that's it. I seen, actually, to be fair, I would have taken a lot of inspiration from <coughs> Al Forn and Rory yeah. Stories. Yeah. And I seen the boys putting the stuff up online. And you see, I, and I was like, oh, I could do impressions like, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I could, and I was looking at what Rory was doing. Like my name was Connor Sketches. Like so, I kind of like yeah. Rory stories, Connor Sketches. Yeah. Like I was kind of pulling from all these lads, and they kind of gave me the kind of I don't know the impetus to go and set up a page because I just I, it's like anything. You see someone do something, and you're like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna try that. But if they never did it, maybe I wouldn't have. But you see, before that, like if I was trying to get a gig with. Uh, RTE doing it. Well, I wouldn't have got it, like, because Oliver That's Callan the is there. And the I'll bad thing is, if you were even f doing it five years earlier, ten years earlier, it could have been a totally different story, like. You know? oh, I mean, yeah. It is about timing, isn't it? Big time, and it's just about the phone. Like, the, the, the phone gives you a yeah. platform. Now I have, like, I know, my Instagram there, I have over half a million followers or something, and you go... 601,000, I just checked. <laughs> Just hit the 600 mark, unbelievable. 602 actually. Oh. Just changed there a few minutes ago. <laughs> It'll be about 605 when this goes up. But uh, 
Do you know, that's a platform that I have that obviously I've built up on the phone. So it's just been, you know, even when I'm not making videos for other people and I'm making them for myself and you're putting it out like, it, it, bef- a couple of years ago, I had to make it and put it on other people's platforms to get seen. Yeah, now, like, I right. can just make it and then the people that are on my platform will share it out to the world for me. Yeah. And the thing only grows and grows and grows. It's because even like your YouTube, I was checking it there, it's like 550,000 subscribers. Like it's massive yeah, numbers. That, that's one, like I get dogs abuse on it, but in the loveliest way. People are always giving out to me that I don't post enough. There's actually very little negativity over on YouTube. Now some people tell me there is, like, and I just, I don't see it. Like, but people are like, will you please like make more content yeah. and stuff? Like and, I, and I really it's... want to. It's just sometimes uh, in terms of the videos I do, like I, like I spent this morning scripting videos and stuff. Uh, I scripted a GA one that I'll shoot like maybe tonight and edit it tomorrow. Yeah. But like, there's a good bit of work in it. Like, to be yeah. the best part of a day and a half. And during your week, there's just, I don't know, because I'm involved in F1, there's golf, there's football, there's GA. I'm a little bit, I don't know what the word is, like not skeptical or whatever, but I'm a little bit apprehensive that I'm kind of, taking on too much nearly. Yeah. Like I wouldn't get involved in another game. Like, now in saying in that- another sport like? Yeah, no, definitely yeah. not another sport. I would get involved in more politics. I think like the okay. general election is coming up in Ireland and it's yeah. coming up in America. Yeah. And I'd like, love to get Biden and get Mary Lou and a few and of them. it's like, do you know what? It's, it's nearly, it's a way you can t- not talk about, like you can be seen doing political stuff, which is super relevant, but you don't actually really have to like give an opinion around. You're just doing oh, yeah, the no, impression. You d- and you don't want to give an opinion. That's what it means. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, it's like a win-win. But that's why I kind of stayed away from it for a while. Like I remember going into the shop <coughs> in Dublin, in Chapel Lizard, and uh, I did a video of Michal Martin. And it was like, it, just a video, he was just making a speech. Yeah, yeah. good evening. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was around COVID time and he was doing that in the whole lot. <laughs> and uh, walked into the shop and this fella was serving me. And I was living up in Chapel at the time. And he's like, oh, story, yeah, I've seen the video. That's a great Michal Martin. Do you know what, though? You have no balls. You didn't go after him enough. Oh, my I was just, yeah, I was there, like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, I'll just have a packet of prawn <laughs> there, first place, Do you know? Yeah. And it, it, I remember even doing that going, oh, I don't know, politics, like, even though that was only a once-off kind mm. of thing with that, but I was thinking, like, you start slagging off yeah. different political yeah. parties, and it's a bit like slagging football clubs over in England, like, do you know, it's like, oh, Okay. Yeah, do you know? yeah, but like yeah, you do it with politics and people literally think you say one thing and they go, he's on this side and fuck him forever. Oh, yeah, like, you know I, I mean? like I've been like, I, I think I'm a decent Trump. Like, you know what? It's really fantastic. We're going to do very well <laughs> right throughout the country. We're going to take America back. It's very and good to be fair. Biden, I've been working on Biden. Uh, you know, hey, come on, man. You know that. It's hey, like no, the eyes hey, and you're just hey, literally. <laughs> hey, man. No. <laughs> It's just, it's just <laughs> inaudible, like. I know, he's, but so I've been practicing him, and he's so hard, man. Yeah. He's so hard. Like I've been at him a good while, and I don't know if I'll get him, but I have a good few months, like, to try and get him. But uh, is there people like that? Who, who, I think I remember, Jordan Peterson as well. That was. Well, you do that, you know. That was, That's a great pint, man. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the it's it's whatever about the the sounding like them, but the accent as well was the Canadian accent. Is, I, I it's work, like completely it was, different than the American accent. Yeah, like. it's kind of weird. There's a little bit of Irish twang in it, yeah. I find. And I, even, I've been to Canada like a few times at work. And I would say like, I would find, I was in <coughs> Ontario and I remember like thinking the taxi drivers would pick you up. And I was like, this, this lad sounds a bit Irish. Yeah. Like. And they were like, no, no, this is our accent. Yeah. You know, they had it like, yeah, you're jumping into the car. Yeah. Like, it was something weird like that. Like, I'm probably doing a serious injustice there. But um, no, I but found I've he... i Jordan Peterson there a couple of weeks ago going, holy fuck. I, I really, really <coughs> spent a lot. And how I kind of tried to delve into his world was I did him talking about golf, so it would be relative to my golf audience yeah, for right, the Masters. Because right. I was like, it's completely new. Yeah. But I want to start doing like stuff like him just coming home and the wife asking where he was or something. Mm. He's on a stag and his way of explaining. Yeah. Like... <laughs> what yeah. he was doing on yeah. the stack. Well, you know, that's when the dragon of chaos took over. <laughs> God. <laughs> We've had chaos. It is. It's, 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 uh, that's exactly what I can put it. That's so funny. <laughs> but speaking, that's actually, I think, a really good name and kind of had a question there about, like, you've lit, like obviously you've met probably everyone in terms of sports people, but there's some people you've act like Tiger Woods, Roy Keane, you've literally sat beside them and done impressions of them, these massive names. Is there someone who's like a bit of a white whale for you in terms of, I'd give anything to like surprise that person on a stage, sit next to them and just go. I'd love to take the piss out of Trump. Trump. <laughs> to Trump. <laughs> what are the chances of that? <laughs> That's definitely uh, a white whale, orange whale. Uh, orange whale, 
<laughs> I'd love to Peterson. If I keep doing Peter, Peterson and he massive, asks man. me to do something that's, like and go on a podcast or something, what that am I seems doing realistic. That? that seems yeah. like that could definitely happen. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to do him in front of him, see what he thinks. I uh, just people like that. I suppose in my job, I find people very interesting. Like, and then you start like um, analyzing people and stuff. And when I'm practicing people, like. Now, I don't do this to, for everybody. Like some people I just get because it's a necessity and it's like, well, he'd be good to have yeah. after a race yeah. or a match or whatever. But then the likes of Peterson, I was like, well, he's a guy I could have like for a long time. He's a huge following as well. Like, so he's, do you know, it's, it makes good business sense just to go and do him. Um, but like, I would have spent a lot of time like watching all his videos and reading books on him and read the 12 rules of life and different things like that. And there's obviously some brilliant stuff in uh, some of what he says. And then, you know, you get these, I don't know, you see these like when he starts crying and he gets really deep into yeah. it and stuff and then that's the kind of side that you need to take the piss out. Yeah. Because that's what's like kind of funny. Jeez, if you're God, person. you know, if, so bad. If a lot of disaffected young men. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The, honestly, the accent, like it's such a tough <laughs> accent. <laughs> uh, yeah, it took me a long time to get him. But he's like, Tommy Tiernan was another fella like that where I spent a lot of time on him because I was like, I know that will that will last me a long time. Like Tommy's always relevant yeah, and he Tommy has the show. Tommy is ridiculous as well because it's like, I feel like it's only when you do the impression that you realize how unique of a way of speaking and of an accent. It's Tommy, weird, but there's a little bit. It's mad, like. West of Ireland, but they're like, it's Nav and yeah. I don't know, it's, yeah. I was going now, down Nav and there's St. Patrick. You know there's that. That's what I mean, you, you yeah. hear him, you're like, whatever, and then you hear that, you go, what the fuck accent is that? Yeah. But it sounds exactly like him. But he did, he lived all around Ireland, didn't he? Yeah. I'd say 80% of the people that I do, I would have spent very little time on. I just kind of mm. would spend, you know, a week or two and try and get like along with a lot of others, but like with the big ones, like obviously Klopp was one that I did a lot, worked a lot, yeah. and that was a big bet. He got me a job pretty much in Joe, and <laughs> he did, like I did a video of him, and no one had ever done him, and it was, <laughs> you know, back well, when, when it was, was really funny. Back uh, 2016. Well, you, for, you forget he's literally been there for nine years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone's saying it now because he's gone. But I would, I if you'd asked me, I'd have said oh, probably four or five or something. But like that's how that's how yeah, long yeah, he's yeah. there. It reminds me of he reminds me of Nidge. Uh, Nidge. Yeah, in the sense <laughs> that like Weasel. I find people are like this, like even like McGregor or these fellas, right? You know, when they're on the way up, they're hilarious, yeah. brilliant, and nothing really annoys them, and then they become the king, mm. and everyone's trying to take them down, and then you just become a little bit more sinister to the world, because everyone's after you. And Great analogy. you kind of turn a little bit darker, and I kind of think like McGregor turned darker when he got real big. Klopp even like is not as fun as he used to be, yeah. he's pissed off with everything. Yeah. Uh, and I remember like in Love Head, <laughs> Nidge was like that. All of a sudden he became number one. And then it was like everyone, he was looking over his shoulder all the time. Yeah, yeah. And it just turned him just a little bit darker or yeah. something. So I kind of find with a lot of celebs and stuff, when they become, even Verstappen in, although Verstappen was always a bit dark. And he always stuff. was. Yeah. He always had that bit of like, a little bit of Kimmy Reichen in yeah, him. Yeah, just yeah, Just kind of like no interest in. Would he, I'll, I'll let you get back to your fucking burst pipe situation at home now, <laughs> for if we're going in the first place. Uh, but would. You're after like, driving down, it's just like, I can't let you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this, that's not showed up. Someone like Verstappen, like you'd be in the in the areas of uh, around all these lads. Like, is there lads who say like you see Ricardo and he's absolutely up for all the crack? I'm sure. And someone like Verstappen, like would you kind of know? I uh, can leave him alone, or he probably is. Uh, like I've, or is like is there certain lads that just seem like they see you as just oh he's just some media fella or like what's? Hey, like I don't know. Like I have to say, I've never got like that kind of reaction off anyone. Yeah. Like I'd never. I remember going to my first Formula One event, and there was different ideas thrown at me by different people, and they were like, "Hey, you know, we might get you to like dress up and walk down and just surprise these people." I was like, "Oh no, no. I was like, you know, I like I'm ten years older than these people." Yeah. I was like, "I'm not going to dress up and kind of." And then they turn around and it's kind of like, "Hey, me with a, you know, can you validate me, please?" You know. Yeah. It was like if I meet them naturally, like I meet them, and we can, yeah. and then just have the camera rolling, which like happens at events like that. Yeah, because you had but, a great video, like yeah, with Danny Ricardo and, and, and stuff. You're just, you were just mosing yeah, around. Yeah, 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 chatting to them. Not and stuff, dressed yeah. up, not nothing. What's the crack? Shaking her hand just happens to be a camera there, and then you might say a line or two of an impression, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's and it just was, very natural, like. That, I was just about to say, it's just natural then when you meet them, and then yeah. they're like not thinking, all right, this fellow's going to take the piss out. Yeah, or like completely. he's coming up, he he expects to get 
a really good 30 seconds of something with me and then he's just going to fuck off. Whereas if you go up and you're just chatting and then yeah. it's like, you, the, like, even with this, like the impression, you just slide them in and slide them out kind of thing. And I think that's, that's the best way to approach, you know, better than me, but I'm sure that's the best way to approach people, especially if they're a little bit kind of known to be standoffish, like someone like Verstappen. Yeah, I find that. And I just also like when I'm doing the videos, like, and I know I always kind of say this, like, but I don't think I've done a video where I'm like, oh yeah, let's really fucking, go after him or let's yeah. take him down kind of yeah. maybe outside Davy Fitz <laughs> uh, probably go a bit harder than Davy but um, yeah there's no one really you'd be kind of and I'm obviously joking when I said about Davy like you're like obviously taking the piss like but yeah of course um, I just think when you meet people I'm like they see the funny side to it too mm. like it's quite flattering to be impersonated I often think like what would someone do if they were impersonating me? Like, and what would your reaction be? Would you be like, oh, is that me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As a, would, you ever, <laughs> yeah. would you ever get like, like if there was a few different impersonators, get, get each other to impersonate each other and be like, I'd say it's... None of us would be worth it. No. <laughs> the time and effort. Yeah. I get that when I do corporate gigs sometimes. Can you do the boss, please? And it's like, like I could if... How long? My, did they just send you a video or something? Like? Oh yeah, they'd send you like a video, like if on the phone and go, hey, I've had it like where they'd send it to me that morning. And I'm like, I appreciate the compliment, but like, no. I actually can't do that. You need to know who this person, like you yeah, need to know, yeah, yeah. can't then, go off one video. You need to know if he said this, how would he sound like? Yeah, and, and some impersonators are brilliant at just That's grabbing gas. one or two things yeah. and like blowing them up and making that character just completely around that. Yeah. And then their impression is that. But I kind of, when I started doing it, like I was trying to nail the voices that much that like I kind of felt, well, I can't really now go and do that kind of thing because if I do, then people will go, well, he's just doing that because he can't do him. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Well, he's obviously can't do that fella because he's just, you yeah, know, fair, so yeah. there's a kind of a, I don't know. There's a difference, I suppose, between an impersonation and then an impression. I suppose that's the thing. And I suppose What's I do. What's the difference? An impersonation is literally, I do you and I go, well, lads, or something, you know, and that's it. And that's the only thing. Well, lads, well, lads. Why am I just there? Well, lads. <laughs> but if I'm doing an impression of you, I'm trying to be you. Well, hard for me. I'd have to like grow about two feet. But, um, that's why we've got this situation <laughs> yeah. going on. I was at the start. I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> when we were in the the pub last time doing it, I was like, there's a little slant on the floor there. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, the point with you. It was like a, a, a father and son. Yeah, literally. Anyway, Connor. Really appreciate it as Pleasure. always. Till next time. Thanks for calling down. Thanks for having me. Great stuff. Hope yeah. you enjoyed your, your hour in Monogar Shamrocks. Unbelievable. Cheers, lads.